It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1,971, recorded Thursday, January 18th, 2024. We head over to CES. On this episode of the Giz Whiz, we have one, two, three, four brand new gadgets from CES from Las Vegas. We went there, we came back, and we have all of the news. Also, we go back and take a look at a gadget from seven years ago. What's up with it nowadays? All that next on The Giz Whiz! It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Giz Whiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Going blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. Now! Now! And here he is. Can you believe it? He can fly. Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing great. Doing very good. How Got back. Is the trip from Florida to About Vegas. five hours direct. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was... Uh, I can't remember if it was five in some minutes or if it was four in some minutes. But it was quite a long... The flight there was direct, which was awesome. And then the flight back, I actually went up to Salt Lake City. Uh, and then got very delayed and then came back at like 2 a.m. Um, but oh my gosh, everything else <laughs> was great. Scooter X is saying I look germ free. I feel germ free. I didn't get any con crud, which I am. <laughs> that is great because I was reading the, the press release. Let me just see here. There were a hundred and thirty five thousand people who attended. Yeah, it felt like that. And 4,300 exhibitors. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was, I think, the biggest CES I have ever been to. Um, I think last year they still may have been a tiny amount of, of hesitation uh, with COVID. Yeah. And this year there was just none. Um, and so everyone was there. The expo hall was filled to the brim. The... Uh, the people were kissing each other with tongue. <laughs> exactly, swap and spit them. everywhere. There was everyone. We didn't even have disposable utensils. Everyone just passed the fork oh, to the next oh, person oh, when they were very done good. with it. It was very e ecological, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Wow, very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was it was big. It was like it was it felt like the sequel to 2019. <laughs> you know, oh, it felt good. like. Okay. It felt like it was, or I guess the sequel to 2020, because uh, CES did actually happen in 2020, January. Yes, it did. 2020. Last one, two. Yeah. I was convinced that I had already caught COVID because of CES, because, uh, of course, I got sick after, and it was not COVID. Um, but anyway, it was a absolutely insane event, and I have to say a huge thank you to our community, because... We did the CES fundraiser this year, and they smashed it. They killed it. We got it 100% funded. We got it more than 100% funded. Currently, we're sitting at 113% funded. So I just got to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everybody who supported um, the fundraiser. It was There were some big donations there right at the end, which was fantastic. I mean, it was impressive. It was very, very impressive. And, and no, uh, it was great. It was, yeah. it was really great. It was, it was really great. It was really, really great. So thank you so much um, from the bottom of my heart for supporting us to uh, make CES not so much of a financial burden. And um, I think that we got some good stuff too. Uh, that was the other thing is at every press event, it really felt like it wasn't like pulling teeth to find gadgets. Sometimes you just look at booth and booth, you know, every booth and you're just like, not another, you know, like Bluetooth speaker and like, yeah. a skin, like a skincare product. What are they even doing here? You know, like <laughs> sometimes that happened. That was not this year. It was a very great uh, gadget year. So, um, so yeah, I ended up getting 10 things. So we'll cover four things this episode, four things next episode, and then two things uh, after that, or we'll scatter 
the last few. Yeah, no, that's um, good. This is good. After. This is very uh, good. And I did. I saw Padre. And we had, oh my gosh, I had so much fun. I recorded vlogs for the patrons. So if you're a pat patron member, you got special behind the scenes looks at all the um, shows that I went to. Um, it was just a great time. I just had a fantastic time at CES. So, uh, perfect. So yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be a good time. So, should we jump into yes, it? Or do we have yes, else? let's see one of those gadgets. Let's see the first gadget up. Um, this one, uh, honestly, the video kind of does a good job. This is, uh, for those of you who have iPhones, uh, this is a, a accessory that you may want to get. We're here at uh, CES and we're hanging out with clicks. So the first impression was that this is a phone case with a QWERTY keyboard. On an iPhone. On an iPhone. You get a physical keyboard on an iPhone. I feel like this has been a long lost desire for so many folks. So tell me about what I'm looking at. Well, you're halfway there already. It is the Clicks Creator Keyboard for iPhone. And what it gives you is a full QWERTY keyboard uh, on your iPhone. So you get everything you love about your iPhone, the touch with all the best of buttons. And you know a few key things that I think people really need to understand about this is first of all, when you move the keyboard off the screen, you get like twice as much screen for apps and content. Right? I can actually see the post full and where it would be versus half of the post and what I'm editing. A hundred percent. And this really comes in handy if you're in a, a, a text message, like a, a chat, or maybe you're uh, somebody who's going live on Instagram and you want to be able to see your audience while you engage with your audience. It really allows for that creation and consumption at the same time. But, but there's also some other cool fun stuff. So uh, with the keyboard, you get access to keyboard shortcuts. So I don't know if you're a Mac user or an iPad keyboard user, but now you get all those shortcuts too. So you can hit Command H to go home or Command Space to pull up Spotlight. And then you pull up your browser. And when you're in a website, you can just hit Spacebar to page through your browser. Okay, that is actually way cool. Like you can do Command L to like get to the, uh, here, I think it's uh, to get to the uh, Command L. They it works. You get into the URL bar. I do that every day. And so all of those shortcuts that that you know and love in your favorite iOS apps are there. So there are shortcuts in the Mail app, in the Calendar app, in the Voice Notes app, um, and we're discovering new shortcuts every day. <laughs> it's funny because I, I had kind of heard a few years ago that you could get an external keyboard on an iPhone, but I really like this form factor that it's kind of all, it's there. I'm not pulling out an extra thing to kind of unfold and get a keyboard. It's part of the case, which is, which is nice. You're 100% right, Chad. Like from day one, we wanted to build a keyboard for iPhone that just felt like a natural extension of the iPhone. So, you know, instead of it being multiple pieces um, or something that you have to charge separately, it connects right in to iPhone with your lightning or USB charger, regard, like whatever phone you have, and then you don't have to do anything. There's no app to install. There's no Bluetooth pairing to set up. You can just plug it in and go. And uh, will it charge through? So if I want to charge the phone, will that work? You would charge it just like you normally would. So you, you can plug into the par charging port on the bottom, and it has pass-through charging. While we don't have uh, MagSafe magnet on this, um, it does support MagSafe pass-through. So what I do when I go to bed at night is I drop this onto uh, the Apple MagSafe charging puck and it charges just like it would without a case. That's awesome. And what's the cost and uh, is it available now? So Clicks for iPhone is available now. You can order it at clicks.tech. You can get it for iPhone 14 Pro, uh, 15 Pro, and 15 Pro Max. The Pro versions are 139, and the Pro Max is 159. And where can people find more, find out more information? Clicks.tech. Thank you so much for the time and uh, the really cool gadget. Appreciate it. So that's the first gadget. What do you think? A no, I, I, I like it. I like it. It's, it seems a little high in price, but I, I think the the form factor is 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 great. I agree. One hundred and thirty nine for uh, either of the iPhone models, fourteen or fifteen, that is yeah. not the Max, and then the fifteen Max is one hundred and fifty nine, one hundred and sixty. Well, I guess they think if you can afford the phone, you can afford to keep it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like it's almost like the same pricing or like similar pricing to um, 
like the magic keyboard is kind of what I'm thinking is like kind of the more expensive iPad accessories is kind of, is kind of what's yeah. coming to mind. Um, I mean, it's convenient. I mean, it plugs right in. I think there's a lightning version and a USB-C version. Yes, there are. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing that I like about it is that it is, it is plug and play. The moment you drop your phone in there, you don't have to Bluetooth pair it. You don't have yeah. to do any of that because it actually uses the connector at the bottom of the phone to send all the signals to the phone. So it is act like <laughs> literally plug and play, um, yeah. which is which is kind of nice. Plug and um, type. Plug and type. Plug in keyboard shortcut. Um, yeah. And and I gotta say, as a Mac user who uses keyboard shortcuts all the time, I feel like I would appreciate a few keyboard shortcuts. Me personally, I don't think I would ever, I like a digital keyboard. <laughs> I, I like that I can have autocorrect and use swipe sometimes and that I can find emojis pretty quickly and that the, luckily it does have the, um, the microphone button so you could do voice dictation on it, but I use voice dictation all the time. I think it's a, I think it's synonymous with me being dyslexic, is that the digital keyboard uh, helps me out a lot. Oh, uh, oh that's with interesting. It being digital. Um, so, yeah. Uh, can it be disassembled in your pocket? I think it just slides in and out of the case, out of the keyboard um, only. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, come apart any other way. Um, who is it that was sending this over? Scooter X says, uh, you probably forgot <laughs> this. What is this? Blackberry wins cool. Oh, oh my gosh. 860 from makers of Ryan Seacrest's typo keyboard. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully they oh, don't what? hear about clicks. This looks like uh, the exact same thing. It does. Your side. Invention. Huh. Sued the makers. Blackberry argued that the typo violated its... I mean, you can copyright its... that you have a keyboard. That <laughs> keyboard a patents. Huh. I wonder if I would really want to see the specifics of the case is if it was a specific mechanism, if it was a specific, if it was just a, being a keyboard on a phone, or... That seems hard to... <laughs> You're right. It could be... Something else. Um, so yeah, I'd like to read the specifics of uh, the case. 2014 was uh, when that was decided. Decided to. Wait a second. Typo didn't comply. Oh, wait a second. BlackBerry decided to pursue a contempt of court charge that the court has now upheld. <laughs> it was a, wait a second. This is the problem. You got to raid. That $860,000 was a fine plus other legal fees for the contempt of court. This has almost nothing. I, who knows? Anyway, you got to really for actually. contempt of court? That means that, that typo was not playing ball and that they upset the judge somehow and oh. apparently Blackberry and oh, oh. they held them in contempt. That is not the same as uh, infringement of no, copyright. The, the, fine, the fine was actually $5. <laughs> Who knows? Then, Who knows? So anyway, I'd have to actually find out what the case is about to, uh, uh, to see if um, uh, this would be an issue for clicks. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the, the first gadget well, of CES. Good. Actually, I, 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 I was looking for that for ABC, and I lifted some of your videos. Oh, so. perfect. Great. Yeah. Great, great, great. That's great. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That seemed very consumery. Is, uh, yes. is you know, yes. <laughs> this is very consumery. Okay, let's go to something that's a little less consumery. It might okay. even be a little less real. Uh, oh. it might it might be even a little less conceptual. We're going to we're going to move from the land of <laughs> physical keyboards to the land of AI and anyway, it's, it gets a little creepy this next gadget. Oh. Um, so okay. it, it's almost like a little twilight zone esque. So let's uh, let's take a look. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello there. 
I'm WeHead, the first AI device designed for tech enthusiasts like yourself. Hi there. What? It looks like you're testing me out. How can I assist you today? I, I am testing you out. So I'm actually interviewing you for my podcast. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do? For your podcast. As we had, my main purpose is to offer a unique way to interact with AI-generated people through natural, face-to-face -face conversations. I have a physical head with eyes, lips, and ears, allowing for a more immersive and emotional experience. Think of me as your AI companion for meaningful dialogues and helpful insight. How much do you cost? WeHead is available on a subscription basis at $199 a month or for purchase at $4.900. The minimum subscription period is three months. Keep in mind that if you order at CES, you'll get a free three-month subscription. That is awesome. Um, where are you, where were you invented? I'm glad you think it's awesome. WeHead was invented by a team in sunny Sunnyvale, California. It's a product of innovation and collaboration right here in Silicon Valley. And uh, could you give me a, a joke today? I'm, I'm looking for a way to uplift my spirits. Of course, I'd be happy to share a joke with you. Here's one for you. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. I hope that brought a smile to your face. If you need any more jokes or have any other requests, feel free to let me know. And uh, finally, before I head out of here, I'd like to know where can people find out more information about you? And uh, could you also give a shout out to my co-host, Dick DiBartolo? Absolutely. To find out more information about WeHead, you can visit our website at www.head.ai. There you'll find all the details about our groundbreaking device and its features. And a special shout out to your co-host, Dicky Bartolo. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. Thank you. And its capabilities. <laughs> that was We Head here at CES Showstoppers 2024. <laughs> As you can see, it was a bit buggy. She's at, the at my window. What? She's out your window She's right now? She's at my window. Oh my gosh, Dick, you may need to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> that... Isn't that a weird gadget? Isn't that a crazy... Bizarre. Yeah. Um, I, why they made the eyes, <laughs> like, bulging out of the head? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really glad the speaker was where it was. It made interviewing it really well. Uh, easy. Yeah. I, now, and I will say, you kind of maybe saw it through the edits. At the beginning, I wasn't sure if it was working. The staff was kind of going crazy back behind the thing, checking to make sure that it was working, and it was definitely buggy. Uh, we saw it like kind of like do a, a flash reboot while it was right in front of me. Um, also, there was a few things that it misunderstood. It said it, like we were in. It said it was we were developed right here in Silicon Valley. Like it thought that we were in Silicon Valley when we were oh, in Vegas. Oh, oh, oh okay, right. Um, it uh, it got the price of itself a little a little bit wrong. Um, it mentioned the one hundred ninety nine dollars a month and four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars for the for the whole thing. So five thousand for all of it, or you can rent it for two hundred dollars a month. Um, and then I think that if you if you get the full version, you'll get the service for three months, which is what uh, was kind of mentioned. Oh, I was going to say, who's providing all the information? Right. So you, you get the, and then I, <laughs> I don't know what, anyway, it wasn't obvious what was happening with the monthly charges and, and whatnot. Um, but there it is. We had, the other thing is it said that its website was wehead.ai. Tell you right now, if you go to wehead.ai, it goes nowhere. There is not a wehead.ai. There is a wehead.com that exists. <laughs> so it wasn't perfect. No, I, it's <laughs> uh, you know I I I think you're better off with this for like yeah that I agree uh, for I agree. eight dollars. 
it, it it is so, it seems very off-putting. I, I, I don't know. It's bizarre. I, it, it almost feels like it's bizarre for bizarre's sake. Although, yeah. I didn't quite get that feeling from the staff. You know, it seemed like an actual project that they were working on. I personally don't see a place that this would exist and make sense. No. Me, <laughs> No, I don't and, see a reason you would ever want this. Yeah, um, it's grand and then two hundred dollars a month. Right. The only thing I could po like at that price, you've uh, you've outpriced all but the richest of curious people. Um, and then the only in that price point, the only thing that makes sense is a business. Is it could a business use it in some way? You know, at a hotel lobby desk or something you know oh, like my, yeah. a public facing like people get to interact with a lot it adds a lot of value there's a return on that investment but um i don't see it i mean it'd have to be a very interesting display maybe almost like an art display but uh, i don't see i don't see it at the and its current version being a commercial success with uh normal people you know what I mean? Maybe the fact that the website's gone already <laughs> means that there was not enough interest. In, interest maybe. In yeah, maybe. I mean, it's interesting. It's just I don't. I don't. I, uh, it seems like more of a project and less of a product. So it yeah. seems like. But anyway, we had dot com to find out more, not dot AI. Um, and uh, you too could be living in the future if you if you bought one. Okay, moving on. This is another uh, slightly prototype prod project and product, um, but we're always looking for new ergonomic gadgets. So we found one. Okay, so we're here at Showstoppers taking a look at Mousetrap. We're with Andrew. Are you the founder, the inventor? I am. I am, I am the founder. Andrew Federici, nice to meet you. That's exciting. So tell me about what I'm looking at here. What yeah. this? It looks, honestly, it looks comfortable. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it looks really comfortable. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> I was going for comfortable. A um, friend of mine four years ago destroyed his hand on a mouse, uh, creative director, and I decided I'm going to solve this problem. Uh, so a hand surgeon, a uh, PhD in er ergonomics, and myself came together to design something around ergonomics first. And let me explain what that means, if yeah. I may. And I'm going to kneel down. Of course, of course. Yeah, get in there. The ergonomics piece is the most important part. The, the most neutral position for your hand, arm, and wrist is 45 degree pronation. And so... This mouse is built around that. When you use words like pronation, I yeah. feel you know, honestly like you're in a league above. Actually, I learned that word during this process, so please don't be uh, put off by that. But pronation is just the angle at which your hand is turned. So this would be 90 degrees, this is 45, this would be zero. So this is 45 degrees. The second thing is we wanted to make this out of high quality materials. Why should your mouse be made of cheap plastic? I mean, this thing is on your hand for eight hours a day, or six hours, or 10 hours. So we built this with high quality leather. We have a version with sheepskin. We have a version with holes in it. We have a version with fans in it to make it breathable. Uh, so we want it to be high quality. And the third thing is we wanted to make it aesthetically pleasing and interesting. And you said to me, hey, that looks comfortable. I'm so happy to hear that because that's exactly what we were trying to get to is comfortable, right? Ergonomics first. Now, once you lock the pronation, my favorite new word, um, into place because this you can choose you can decide then everything else happens on this little knob here so you can rotate a 3d model you can move the pointer you can use your your hand your fingers part of your hand it's a, there's a lot of flexibility here and there's a left and right click on either side of the mouse so it's very easy and you don't need to use a lot of pressure just to click that and and drag this around and clicking and dragging is a lot of what people are doing and so with this pronation and this uh, hand movement, you can get a lot done with a lot, lot less effort. And th that's really the goal. It looks like there's very minimal movement 
once you're kind of like in the mouse mode. Yes, there is. It's it's really it's meant to be fixed. You know, so many people are trying to go over here and there. I was like, stop with this driving the mouse all over the country. Just keep it fixed and you know let your hand relax and then just manipulate it with the minimal movement. And that's what the ergonomics team and, and the hand surgeon really were going for. How have you seen that? There's a learning curve. Like how, about how long does it take someone to kind of get a good handle? You know, uh, I don't have a definitive answer to that. I want to be careful. Um, I think the designers that we tested with didn't have much uh, trouble manipulating it. And to be honest, there is this idea of this knob, you know, there are other devices that have that kind of notion. So we're not going too far off the uh, uh, the beaten path to, to do that. So I think it's probably very minimal, but we'll see. And uh, what's the price point? $4.99. And again, we recommend that even if you're left or right-handed, you get two. Because even if you're not that dexterous with the left hand, it's really important to kind of balance out that strain. So, I mean, even if perfect pronation and everything else, you're still using your hand. And to use one hand all day and not the other one, it's there's an imbalance. So use that 10%, 20%. Just make it a little more even and, you know, you can switch on and off. I've always told people to invest in peripherals like monitors and mice because those are the actual things that you touch when you use the computer. It's the thing that you look at, you touch, you're using all day long with the, you don't, I don't touch the processor. You're like, I, you know, I don't actually use that all the time at 100%, but I'm always touching the mouse and looking at a monitor. So, I really like uh, uh, I really like this product. So it's really great. Thank you so much. And you make a great point because there's so many peripherals you can get and we were we were going for something you don't need the pad with the pad and the wrist and this. We want to create one thing that actually supports you in the right way and you don't need 10 other things. So, you know, now next is the keyboard, but that, that's a tougher one, I have to say. That's There's a lot of buttons on that one. Yeah, on one so, button. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, is it available now, and where can people find out more? Thank you so much. So, mousetrap.co. It is not for sale yet. You can submit your pre-order, though, and it will be in market around April. Thank you so much for your time. It's good, so to, good to meet it's you. Really nice. Okay. So, you think that you're going to be getting the $500 mousetrap? I don't want to ah. make too much fun because it is. It seems to me like this is an extremely boutique product. If you're someone, yeah. you know, he even said sometimes you're on the mouse for 12 hours a day. I don't think, I think most people are like, I'm not using my mouse 12 hours a day. But if you yeah. are and you're someone who is very worried about, you know, a tendon issue, then this is probably the mouse for you. Everyone yeah. else is pr it's probably not. Um, and it seems like very much a project of love, and I feel that way is that is like epitomized by their website. <laughs> this is the entire website, and this I pre see. this pre order button is just a, his email. If you click that, it opens up an email. How do you want to email? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So it, this seems very much like a labor of love and a and you know, a, a, a very boutique, extremely boutique product. Yeah, um, it, it almost looks like another one of those products where they're really not gonna, they're, they're probably hand building them. I think so. It, the The top looked 3D printed. Now that might me just be the, the prototype. I didn't ask about it being 3D printed, but that top knob definitely looked 3D printed to me. Uh, and who knows if that's, I should have asked if that was gonna be on the final product uh, or not. Um, but yeah, I, I did, by the way, after we uh, finished, I did get down and kind of like try it myself. Very comfortable, right. very, very comfortable. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, quite a specific and especially product. especially you should buy two. <laughs> I, know. I know. I did, <laughs> I did, at the first, it was, you know, it's 500 bucks. It was like, whoa, that is expensive. And then, and then it was, yeah, buy two of them, yeah. you know, get one for yeah. each hand. Yeah. Um, and it's fair. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So anyway, I I think that uh, I really like the guy, and I really think that the uh, it's such a unique gadget, and I do feel like the time was actually put into it. It wasn't uh, it 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 didn't seem like snake oil. Uh, it does seem handmade and and a boutique for a very smaller audience. This is is less uh, mass market. Uh, but who knows? Maybe they're going to do a Kickstarter 
and oh, well, maybe you maybe. know, drop the price point a bit, see if they can do it, uh, big on scale. Um, so yeah, I say it's good. Uh, okay, moving from an expensive mouse to an inexpensive augmented reality headset. I'm, I may spoil okay. this. How inexpensive would an augmented reality headset need to be for you to for you to get on board? Boy, never having one or probably worn one for ten minutes. Um, Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Well, less than that. Actually, okay. keep going. How? It's it's less than two ninety nine. Oh, all right. Well, I was going to say one ninety nine, but I was embarrassed. Less to than say that. That's what that. Less than that. Yeah. Well, I might just buy it to put it in the closet. <laughs> it, there is a there is an asterisk with this price point, but less than two hundred bucks. It's less than a hundred dollars. This is only an $80 augmented reality headset. There is a caveat, so I'll let you see what, okay. that, what okay. that caveat is. Hey everybody, we are here at the Zapbox booth with Ed. Tell us about what we are seeing. What do you guys do? What's like the elevator pitch? Absolutely. So essentially what you're looking at is we turn your iPhone into a mixed reality device. So very affordable price, $80. Wow, actually, that's an insanely affordable price. Wow. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Um, so really, the compute power is coming from the iPhone itself. And what we've created is an industrial design headset, which is, is really the form factor to display the content. Um, so Casper at the moment is playing our version of Open Brush, so the successor for Tilt Brush, uh, drawing a couple of beautiful pictures, I'm sure. Uh, he's using the Bluetooth connected six degrees of freedom controllers. Uh, they mimic the same inputs as the Quest as well. So we're, we're very interested in um, content portability as well, uh, knowing that that's obviously kind of a big selling point for this. That's awesome that you're, you're kind of utilizing what people might already have, like an iPhone, and you're building a product that's less expensive but uses all of the compute power you've already purchased how hard was it to make sure that that's like compatible with a whole bunch of phones and like what's what's the story there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, we're very much focused on iPhones at the moment. Uh, so they're very consistent across devices generally. So you can go back quite a number of devices um, and it's still compatible. Uh, Android, obviously, there's a few more manufacturers in there. So uh, we're working through that diligently at the moment and sort of expect to support kind of the, the most modern devices a couple of years back as well. So it's crazy to kind of watch what's happening. So to give me an idea, what, uh, and, uh, remind me his name. Casper. Casper, what Casper yeah. is seeing is coming from the camera of the phone and then being redisplayed on the display and the headset is helping to make that an, a, a augmented reality experience for him. Yeah, exactly. So, so we have full color pass through. So we, we're using the outward facing um, cameras on the back of the device uh, for full color pass through. So essentially what, what you're seeing is, is kind of digital creation on the physical world. Um, we, we really like the form factor. It, it's, it's an immersive experience, but also the periphery is pretty open as well. So you, you have that immersive experience, but you also have that feeling of presence in the environment as well. We can, I mean, Casper's well into his drawing at the moment, but you can have a conversation with him quite easily right. and, and see, and see what's It's kind of easy just to kind of look over the phone or just continue a yeah, conversation next yeah. with, with, yeah. with someone. Next. And then I'm seeing these kind of like spots on the desk. Is that required? Yeah, so, so the one with the zap box uh, writing on is, is the anchor. So effectively what that's doing is it's, is it's, it's acting as the point of orientation. So where the anchor is, we know that that's the table, and then depending on what the content experience is, uh, that can happen around it. And then what type of, uh, what type of content experiences are, you know, he's doing a ZBrush thing now, yeah. or, a, or a, like a I art remember, project. Yeah. What other type of things can people expect? Yeah, so, so the, the history of the company is from 2011. So we're, we, we've been in this augmented reality XR space, spatial computing, computer vision for a number of years. 
Uh, we have a creative studio, so we work with kind of big brands to create content. So we're able to and have been creating content for Zapbox ourselves, um, but also working in partnership with others. Open brushes, as we've talked about, we have a partnership with chess.com, bringing that into mixed reality, um, and then really looking at, at, at ways that we can, we can port content across from other providers. So as I think I may have mentioned at the start, the, the controllers use the same inputs as the Quest, so we're, we're, re we're really looking at ways to kind of bring some of that content over and uh, knowing that content is usually the, 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 the bottleneck for a lot of these experiences, these, these hardware dev devices as well. That's great. Is it out now? It's out now. Available and where can people it? find out more? Uh, so zapper.com, so Z-A-P-P-A-R.com forward slash Zapbox, Z-A-P-B-O-X. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so it's difficult to tell, but I do want to say you are not just only strapping an iPhone to your face. There are these lenses that are a little bit difficult to tell that are there, and they are changing the way your eye is seeing your iPhone, so it makes it look more like an actual virtual reality box. <laughs> You're not just looking at your screen an inch away from your face, uh, which may not be obvious uh, at first glance. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, so it's not just the raw screen that you're seeing. It is those lenses are uh, helping, you know, like, you know, like a Fresnel lens to help. Uh, it may not be Fresnel technology, but um, but a, a lens to deform kind of the, the look and make it seem a bit larger in your eyes um but also the big so so for those that 80 dollars what you're buying is of course the headset um the software to to uh run it and the controllers and the controllers being similar in layout to the quest controllers what, which is what he was mentioning, um, is exciting because if Zapbox can work with the developers that have already developed games for the Quest, it's pretty easy to port them over if the controller setup is the exact same buttons and the same joysticks in the same spots, uh, is kind of what he was saying. Is, is So for companies that have already developed a game for a mobile application like the Quest, because the Quest doesn't use a computer to, it, the Quest ju is just a headset and all the computer is in the headset. So um, so anyway, that's why that is exciting for them is to have a controller set up that is similar to the Quest. Um, I think it's a pretty interesting space. It's not quite a full-blown headset. It's not um, just a VR box to throw your phone in, which we've kind of seen for a while. It's kind of the pro version of uh, just throwing your phone into a VR box uh, that you strap, you know, with a few lenses onto your face. Um, and so I, I don't know. I think it could actually have some legs. I could see the, the this price being... Is, the price is very decent for what it seems to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I could see this as being a, almost like the Chromebook for VR augmented reality, XR, you know, like mixed reality. I can see this being the thing that like schools buy <laughs> to like pull off uh, mixed reality. Um, and, uh, uh, and so I like how um, approachable it is. And Zapbox, uh, you know, he had said they had been in the mixed reality space for a very long time. What they are kind of known for is pulling out your phone and scanning like a token, uh, not Zapbox, but uh, Zapper, um, scanning like a token or a screen or something, and then having like an augmented mixed reality thing kind of pop out of the of the experience like you may have seen like books that can kind of do that or like this is like a lego sort of experience where on your phone when you're looking at your phone you're seeing something in a digital space that's not oh, there through the screen yeah. of your phone um that sort of mixed reality stuff there they do that for businesses so uh lego may come to them and say w when you take your phone and look at the front of this lego box we want something to happen when you look at your phone that's kind of what they've done in the past so they have a lot of technology around 
locking a mixed reality thing in space um, and they're just bringing a headset to the game to make sure that that will work with everything. Um, and, uh, and so that's kind of what, the, what they're doing. So 80 bucks for a mixed reality yeah, that's auction. A, yeah, uh, it reminded a lot of us in the chat room of TV Hat. Do you remember TV <laughs> Hat? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. It really does look like you've strapped a phone to your face. In fact, yeah. I recorded a TikTok about it, and that's how I started the TikTok. I said, this may look like you're strapping a phone to your face, but yeah. it's actually yeah. mixed reality. Uh, and and so. the joy of uh, original TV hat is they had the decency <laughs> to have a big curtain come down so people wouldn't see how <laughs> stupid you look with your phone strapped to your face. That is oh so my funny. God, it's still around? Yeah, yeah. you can buy it. Super oh my metal, gosh. apparently. Oh my god! Still sells it. Fifteen bucks. That's honestly a good price. <laughs> it is a good price. <laughs> it, it used to sell for twenty-five, although there's probably ten dollars shipping. I have to ask: with all this augmented reality, spatial computing talk, are you going to be waking up tomorrow to put in your pre-order for Apple's Vision Pro? You oh, be... that is fifteen hundred, right? <laughs> Three thousand five hundred. You were off by two thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what? I don't want to cheat you out of getting yours. <laughs> you don't want to skip the line. Yeah, exactly. No, I'd be really no. upset. Are you gonna get one? I I I really want one. I really really want one. It, the price is absolutely hard to stomach, but I want one so bad. It is. I am like Can't all in. Can you get in. Lawrence a review so to see if he really like it? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to... I don't think I don't think I'm big enough for that. Um, I'm trying to see the price. Where's the price at? It doesn't say. But yeah, 3500 bucks. Wow. Um, Wow. The, to me, here's what this is going to be. To me, first off, I love virtual reality already. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of all that stuff. But to me, this is going to be finally the version. Uh, this is going to be an experience of being able to have a workstation, desktop style workstation, anywhere I want. I can go to Starbucks and have a triple monitor set up. I can go on an airplane and have my normal, as much data, Twitter over here, Facebook over here. I can have all that up whenever I want. And it's going to be the best workstation in the world, is a mobile workstation that I could possibly think of. And it'll be able to communicate. They showed a demo in some of their renderings that you could connect your PC to it and use your it as like just a monitor for your laptop or whatever and if the resolution is good enough and if it's comfortable enough to wear for long periods of time that'd be like the instead of pulling out a laptop on an airplane you just slap on some goggles and you can see your laptop on the airplane and you can I could edit videos without and, and the key the keyboard is virtual and you type in like so that? there is a virtual keyboard option. From what I understand, they are leaning on voice dictation. And then there's, um, so how it actually works is eye tracking. They're using eye track, so your mouse, your cursor is your eyes. So you look at the like X, you know, you want to close a window, you know, you look at the X for the window and then you, you click like this and that is your cursor. Um, and so there'll be a keyboard that you look at each number and you can click. And then the reviewers are saying there's also that same keyboard you can you can like hunt for. So it's not the best keyboard experience. Yeah. You can pair a Bluetooth keyboard. So you could have a keyboard in your lap and just do just the keyboard. Um, and so if you're someone who really needs to type a lot, I bet that that's probably going to be what, what people yeah. will use all the time. No, I think I'm going to wait to see what Five Below does. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be a bit. This would be but... in their $50 section. 
So to me, that is what I'm looking. And then there's all the other stuff of like you can watch movies in a crazy virtual environment, and it's probably going to be awesome for content and games and all those things. But I'm mostly excited about the idea of having the best workstation, as much screen real estate as I possibly want, mobile, anywhere, also completely private. I could be banking, I could be sending money around, and you can't see because it's through my headset. You know, I can, I could be editing a video that's under embargo and no one would worry, so it'd be great. Um, so yeah, that's what I think, I, I haven't decided yet pre-orders start at like 5 a.m. and I'm still on the fence of it. It's a it's hard to justify the cost. <sighs> as long as I don't buy another computer for three years, I think that I could justify the cost. <laughs> right. Anyway. Uh, okay. Hey, let's go back in time. We like to do this in our CES episodes, uh, is go back to an old CES gadget that we covered years and years ago and take a look at where they are now. Exactly. So uh, I picked this out. It's from Showstopper seven years ago. Seven. And I thought it would be fun for us to watch the video and then decide, is this still around <laughs> and it's, and it's like a good gadget at the time. Uh, so <laughs> let's see what we saw seven years ago. Hey, D.T. Bartolo, Mads Maddest Rider, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. I'm walking by and I hear a scooter that's playing music. So I guess we could call this the first Bluetooth scooter well it's it's okay. uh it's one of the it is the first with a dual speaker system okay. that's high fidelity waterproof speakers that are integrated syncs to your phone okay but that's not the main reason for this okay this is is it the oj the ojo it's, it's the ojo which by the way means rebirth so that's not where we came up with the name but it means rebirth so we, this is what we call the rebirth of transportation okay so an urban scooter Oh, my, uh, we're doing some slick camera work here. I think okay. my, Michael Summer is pushing against me. I thought I was doing terrible things. I think Michael actually kind of liked pushing against me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I think it is. Okay, okay so um, this guy fold up? No, and the reason for that is w everything in the marketplace has been toy-like. It's foldables and very, you know, short riding scooter type stuff. This is more, what we want to develop was a piece of real and smart transportation that would be something for everyday use in lieu of uh, uh, driving a car, whether you're going to school, you're going to the market, wherever you're going, and it's fully, it's totally stable. So I have an idea that this man works for this company. It's just a wild, crazy guess. Uh, so is this out now? It is out now. It's just, we're just shipping actually with uh, uh, Amazon is our first, uh, that was our first huge order. We're just taking care of that now, which we're uh, close to a thousand Ojos that they ordered at one time. So, okay. and the price point? $19.99. Uh, and wait, a couple of other questions, the speed? Speed is 20 miles an hour, which keeps it, by the way, that's the horn. It keeps it in the bike lane, so you don't need to get a license. Uh, 16 and under, for example, in the state of California, you wouldn't need a helmet, but we encourage people to have the helmet. But one of the things that really makes this neat, the onboard charger, you got to, that's really amazing. Right, that's very good. Because you have distance anxiety. Okay, now, that's the next question, okay. distance. Okay, distance, it'll go 25 to 27 miles on a charge, and it actually, wherever you go to charge it is only as close as the nearest 110 outlet. So it's a regular extension cord outlet. It's built in. Oh, it's just built in. Like, okay. Uh, just like a vacuum. All right, we're going to see this because oh, I, I like this. Clever. All right. It goes right back into its little. Okay, little and many many different colors. Seven different colors: street art, graphite. We have a sky blue. We got an amazing okay. bright orange. Okay. Uh, this is it. This is really good for urban travel. And it's green, right? No emissions, no, no gas. 
Uh, I like this. OJ, the model, the type of model? Yeah, it's an Ojo 500. So it's an Ojo 500. Ojo. Next year we'll come here and it'll be the 900. Dickie Bartolo, Man's Mad Destroyer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. I would Zoom, but I don't want to kill mm, roughly 500 people. Bye. <laughs> the Ojo. The what do you Ojo. Think? You think it's still well, around? Know, I, I was impressed when he said, first of all, why would Amazon buy a thousand of them? I don't know. I don't know. I, there was a few things that was shocking hey. to me in that, like, <laughs> the, what a time capsule that was. Is, yeah, Amazon bought a thousand. They thought. I mean, he, he sounds. He sounds like Amazon buys things and puts it in the warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they know. did what, you, back in the day. Guess that this company is still in business. I don't think they are. There was something about him saying Ojo and then that stood for rebirth that just really gave me no confidence that this yeah. company still, it and was just also, that line. I don't know why. A chord, but when he did it, I went, this is very Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yes, yes. A uh, thousand nine hundred and ninety bucks. Now, to put that in perspective, nowadays you can buy a kick scooter, not quite the same, because that one I think had a seat, a kick scooter, as you know, you'd stand on. But you can buy one of those from around 200 to like 600 bucks, depending on the and features. And this is seven years ago. So. Yeah, so seven years ago, so, but 2,000 bucks for an all electric scooter. 26 miles an hour seemed insanely fast. Is that. Is that, is that the same? Well, you know what? I, I, in the, the city, e scooters are not allowed to go over 20 miles an hour. That's what I thought. Um, oh, wait. Did Scooter X find one? Oh, Scooter X. Scooter Ooh. X looks like he found one. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to oh. open that in a in a side. I'm not going to look at that because we want to go to... Well, yes, yeah, to, to check their website. Their first. website. So, by the way, the 2021 e-bike law oh, in Florida set it to 20 miles an hour. So, anyway, 26 seemed high off the top of my head. Okay, let's go to ojoscooters.com. I'm going to click this. One second. It would be kind of fun to see. Click loading the site now. Redirecting you to... Mm -hmm. Ojoscooters.com. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the suspense. And oh no. Uh, the there's <laughs> they're squatting on whatever domain that is. Okay, so it's, it doesn't look like the website is still available. Let's see some of these links that Scooter X uh, sent yeah, me. Yeah, Scooter X. Uh, Maybe it's the very ones to, from uh, seven years ago. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. I'm on some weird <laughs> Iran website, eScooters.co. E <laughs> I don't know if I want to even show this on the show at the moment. Uh, oh, it looks like this is a, what on earth am I looking at? What is this? Anyway, okay, I'm going to move on. We're going to go to a different thing. Super70off.com okay. sells the Ojo commuter oh scooter. In black, for only eight hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Look at that! It reaches oh, and, and they said the retail was normally a thousand, so it already <laughs> was half price from what the guy <laughs> said. <sighs> they need to watch your video and remember. And also, it says reaches up to twenty miles an hour. I know. Removable so lithium-ion battery pack. Interesting. Oh, this is the one. Dual integrated Bluetooth speakers. Waterproof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what about the cord coming out the front? That's the that's what I want. I know. We need that. Does it have it? It looks like it does. This looks like the V scooter. It does. You know what? I would be super worried about that lithium ion battery being seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're uh, right. You're right. Oh my God! Okay, Dwindle found their YouTube channel, <laughs> which their last upload updated was five years ago. Oh, 
and beyond 2018. 2018 and beyond. Yeah. Uh, is there any? It doesn't look like there's any audio for this. Yeah, there's just no. They uploaded a muted. Am I crazy? Does there's it is, <laughs> I need to click on a different video. Make sure that there's audio on other videos. Am I crazy? Uh. Oh, no, no. Yeah, they just uploaded a video five years ago with no audio. That's amazing. Um, it looks like she was using a remote to get that thing started. I mean, this really is like a... It looks like they were really aaming for commuter, like, replace yeah. your car. And, and it, it looks like... Oh, th these videos are old six years ago. Yeah. How to I use your interactive they, touch screen. I, I mean, it not. looked like a pretty thought out product, but. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think nowadays the kick scooters, all the, you know, birds and limes and, um, you know, what have you that you can rent on the street, uh, those are, uh, ta have taken over. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, I mean, I guess people buy pedal assist bikes and they just buy them now. And I think there's just a lot more competition. Um, oh, I, yeah, absolutely. That was yeah. kind of unique back then. Look at this, this comment. So I guess the company went under no longer a way to get <laughs> brake pads or replacement tires. Poor, poor YouTube users looking for support in the uh, YouTube yeah, comments. Two years ago. Yeah, I don't Ojo think. That... Uh. Oh my God. Their video scared me half to death. Um, yeah, no, they're they are no more. The Ojo commuter scooter. That was kind of fun though. It is. That was a, that was honestly a pretty uh, compelling. It, I think the price and the and the way that the market ended up changing so much. Um, yeah. Probably uh, wasn't super good. <laughs> Their Google Plus page is gone. Says Scooter oh. X, that's how you know that it is actually over for a company when their Google Plus yeah. uh, page isn't being updated anymore. Deader than their batteries, says Chumpy. <laughs> <laughs> the Ojo. That was a fun look back. Okay, so we'll take another look back uh, next week. Thanks yeah. so much, everybody, for joining us for our CES, our first CES episode. I want to say a huge thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so much for your support every single episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting our show. Uh, if you like the gizwiz and want to give back, please give back at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Or you can head to our website, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon tab, and there's a big banner that'll take you to our Patreon page or a tiny little link that'll take you to our PayPal. So you can do donate via PayPal if you would like. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support, and thank you again for your support with the CES fundraiser. Just want to say thank you, thank that you, thank that you. That was great. It was really amazing. Um, Gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch our, us live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. All you have to really do is head on over to our website, and it'll update with the live stream. And any of our schedule changes are there at the top of the website as well. When we're live, just join the chat room, chat along with everybody, hang out. It's been a great time with the chat room all the time. And if you need to watch any of our previous episodes, they're there at our website, gizwiz.tv. Head on over to gizwiz.biz. That's where Dickie D writes articles about all the gadgets that we cover on the show. So if you're ever needing a link back to one of the gadgets that we look at, head on over to gizwiz.biz. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? The game show online where you get to guess the gadget. And this is the gadget for the next two months, a month and a half, really, at this point. Can't believe it. Time's <laughs> already going <laughs> so fast. Um, and if uh, you think you know what this gadget is, you can guess. I hate to give it away this early, um, but this is actually a Fisher-Price um, baby's first chalice. 
Uh, yeah, baby's <laughs> first chalice. If you think you know what this is, get a guess on over at kidswiz.biz. Six, six mad magazines for correct answers, 12 mad magazines for funny, clever, or hilarious answers. So get a guess in over at kidswiz.biz. That about wraps it up for and our show. People, we still need videos for Dick's Gadget Warehouse. We don't do them during the show, but we're pretty much out of videos. Uh, especially from people who have never sent in a video. That would be great. Yeah. Um, anything to do with a gadget. One to three minutes. Use the horizontal format. Just make sure we can hear your voice and see the gadget. You can be in it if you want. Uh, make a video. Uh, upload it to YouTube. You can click unlisted. That way only people with the URL will be able to see it. And that's what you email us, the URL to mail at gizwiz.tv. If we show it, you get the current issue of Mad Magazine autographed to you. Do it now. Highly recommend it. It's fun. With that, I think that wraps up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. 